Morning, everyone. My name is Jack Naglieri, and I'm a security engineer at Airbnb. I'd like to start off with a hypothetical situation that many of us are probably familiar with. Imagine that you just joined a new team, and your project is to build log data analysis and alerting capabilities for your company. You have two colleagues, thousands of laptops, along with thousands of servers to collect logs from. And ideally, this solution should also account for company growth for the next one to two years. Where do you start? Most of us choose one of two options. Option one is to deploy and develop your own tool. Some of the challenges here are that it requires a large amount of engineering time and resources to get going. And as a developer, you're responsible for building in the reliability, the security, and the scalability of your product from the ground up. So quick show of hands. How many of you have had to rebuild a tool that you previously created elsewhere? That's a pretty good amount of people. So the reason for this is that as an industry, we like to build on top of our own internal and proprietary uh, customized infrastructure and tech. So what's our second option? Deploy an existing tool, either commercial or open source. Some of the challenges with this approach are that normally you have to make customizations for this tool to work in your environment. Uh, the scaling, the upgrade, and maintenance of this product can also be non-trivial. And we sometimes run into deployment issues like the time to get going and time to completion, skill set required for certain frameworks, and a potential reliance on outside teams for operational purposes. So let's do another show of hands. Has cost, time, or staffing ever prevented you from deploying a tool you needed? <laughs> yeah, I mean, me too. So if there was an ideal option for this log data analysis tool that we needed to build, what do you think it would look like? First thing that we would want is a push button automated style deployment, very low operational overhead to run, built-in scalability and reliability, and of course, secure by default. So how do we get to this ideal solution? Um, this, or sorry, today this option is made possible by using cloud providers like Amazon Web Services. Uh, AWS is great because it gives us the benefits of built-in and abstracted scalability, reliability, and security controls. And then for automation, replication, and sharing infra, we can use an infrastructure tool like Terraform, which I'll talk about later in the talk. So the Airbnb security team has begun to embrace this new world, and today I'll be sharing and open sourcing a project which utilizes these technologies called StreamAlert. What is StreamAlert? It is a serverless real-time data analysis framework with point-in-time alerting. It works by consuming and analyzing a high throughput of various log sources, comparing them against rules, and then alerting us if a match occurs. It's also fully customizable to meet the needs of your organization. Some of the benefits of Streamler are that it can scale to handle terabytes of data per day. It comes with a fully automated push button deployment. It abstracts a lot of the operational overhead away because of this automated deployment process. Um, we also wrote it in a common language, which is Python. A lot of people are familiar with that. And then it has a low cost in terms of dollars and cents. So to give you an idea of the type of data that we can support for analysis, we can do JSON data. We can look at syslog. We can analyze uh, CSV and key value pair data as well. And to give you an idea of the types of logs that uh, this is, we can support web application style logs like Ruby on Rails or Apache. Uh, if we look at network style logs, we can analyze Palo Alto network logs, VPC flow logs, system level logs like syslog, and uh, environment level logs like um, from AWS, Azure, or whatever your cloud provider is. So after this talk, you'll be able to deploy StreamAlert with ease to meet the needs of your environment. I'll walk through the design, how to send data for analysis, writing rules to trigger real-time alerts, and finally walk through the deployment. So one of the main goals of StreamAlert is to make the deployment of security tools simple. And this gives anybody the ability to use it. To accomplish this goal, we really needed to build on a common platform. And today, a lot of companies are built on Amazon Web Services, including Airbnb. And because of that, we chose AWS as the option for StreamAlert. So if you're a frequent user of cloud providers, you know there's a ton of ways to accomplish something. We had a lot of decisions to make when it came to deciding on how we were going to get millions of logs 
from several clusters of machines analyzed in real time with only two people on our team. Because of our limited resources, we decided to choose a serverless approach. So in this serverless model, the uh, developer only focuses on application logic. There are no physical or virtual servers to manage, maintain, update, or scale. And at the heart of Streamler lies a service called AWS Lambda. And the way Lambda works is like this. You develop your application code, you upload it, and then Lambda automatically runs it for you in an isolated environment. This was a huge win for us. Additionally, it's really economical because you only pay by usage. So let's do some quick math. The total price of using Lambda breaks down into the sum of total compute seconds plus the total number of requests. So if our Lambda function is executing at 100 milliseconds with a memory utilization of 128 megs, and we're doing on average of a million requests a day, we only end up paying $5.80 a month for this processing. So that's like a cup of coffee somewhere. So pricing aside, the, uh, a huge benefit of being on AWS is that we get built-in security features. So with Streamalert, we ensure that all resources follow the principle of least privilege by using IAM rules. Uh, our data transport processing and storage is also segmented um, sort of like a production versus corporate environment. Um, all code is run in an isolated, uh, as I said before, an isolated containerized environment. And then finally, all data sent into Streamalert uses TLS. So you might be wondering on how we get data into Streamalert. We have two ways. The first way is by using a service called AWS Kinesis. And continuing with our serverless platform, Kinesis provides a stream to say, send data into from thousands of data producers. As data is emitted into the stream, Lambda pulls new logs, matches them against rules, and then an alert is sent if a match is found. So last year, the Airbnb security team released a blog post on Medium that outlines how we use uh, OS query to send logs into Kinesis for analysis. And um, the way that OS query works is that it, uh, it allows us to query data from hosts, such as installed users, running processes, and much more. Uh, these queries execute on specified intervals, and then they emit JSON data out into our Kinesis stream, which is then analyzed by Lambda. But OS query is not the only thing that you could use to send data in. Uh, AWS wrote a agent called the AWS Kinesis agent. <laughs> And um, this allows you to configure your host to send uh, logs directly into Kinesis. Uh, if you are a popular, or sorry, if you're a user of a popular logging framework like Logstash or FluentD, there's existing output plugins today that you could use to send it into Kinesis. And then finally, if you're a developer and you want to build your own producer, you have this option with the AWS SDK in a language of your choice. So the second way that we get data into Streamler is by writing logs directly to S3. And if you're, familiar, if you're unfamiliar with S3, it is AWS's simple storage service, which organizes your data into different buckets. And the way that this process works is that as an object is written into S3, an event is triggered uh, that's sent to our Lambda function, which then pulls and analyzes the data. So you might be thinking, why would I want to use one or the other? So with, uh, with AWS Kinesis, you have a maximum record size of only one megabyte. Um, and a benefit of using S3 here is that if you have um, bigger data, you could just store it in there. Um, but with Kinesis, it's more performant since you don't have to fetch the data out of band. And then finally, with S3, uh, it's great because a lot of SaaS providers already use S3 as their source. So it was our hope that the combination of both of these would give us the most coverage for, uh, for users. All right, let's move on to the fun part, which is writing rules to trigger real-time alerts. So a rule is simply a user-defined Python function that evaluates the true. Each rule is declared with a unique name, a list of log sources to load from, uh, common matchers, and then outputs to send to when alerts are, um, are found. Records are used as input for all of our functions, and then a Boolean expression, or sorry, a chain of Boolean expressions determine if a match is found. So what we'll do is we'll go through this example. So in this example log, uh, this is the result of OS query, a logged in users query. And basically what this is saying is that we have a user named Mike logged into this host called host1. And what we're going to do is we're going to write two alerts that would be triggered because of this log. 
So the goal of the first one is going to be to catch unauthorized access. So we're, we're going to say that our user Mike is an unauthorized user. So what we do is we declare our rule. We call it invalid user. We want to look only at OS query data. And then we want to send an alert to PagerDuty if a match is found. So what we do is we define our function. We set up our whitelist, which is off users. And then we set a couple of shortcuts in, in our code for, um, for the query and the user. So as you can see, it, I added some comments uh, denoting that we're looking for logged in users and we're looking for Mike. So what we do is we have a return statement that says if our log type is a logged in users log and our user is not in our authorized users whitelist. So this would trigger an alert, which would send to PagerDuty. So let's go to our second rule. So this one will utilize a third party Python library called NetAdder to catch uh, logins from an unauthorized subnet on our network. And this could be indicative of an ACL failure for a host or some subnet. So similar to our first rule, we lay out the name, our log sources, and then this time what we're doing is we're casting our IP from our record into an IP address class from NetAdder, and then we're also casting our CIDR of 10.2.00/24 into an IP network class. And then our return statement is just the same thing. Query is logged in users, and our IP is not within our valid CIDR. So this should give you a good, enough, a good idea of the power of using Python for uh, expressing rules like this. So in both of our examples, we had a little bit of repeated code uh, to look for the logged in users query. And what we can do is we can use a thing called a matcher to extract out this common logic and then apply it to all related rules. So let's do that right now. So the first step of this is to pull out the redundant logic that we had in both uh, rules. And then we uh, declare a new matcher called logged in users. And then what we do is when we write our rule, we leave that logic out and then we add a match of logged in users. And then both are evaluated during processing. So matchers are really useful for identifying records of certain environments, roles, or maybe platforms. Um, and since you control your inputs, you have full flexibility in how you choose to design your rules and your matchers. So now that we know about how rules work, let's talk about how alerting works. So in our previous rules as shown here, uh, we had an output defined as PagerDuty. Uh, so when a match occurs, alerts get bundled together and then sent to a service called AWS SNS, which is also continuing with our serverless pattern. Uh, SNS is Simple Notification Service by Amazon. And this allows us to route alerts to our defined outputs. So what we end up doing is we, after alerts are written to SNS, that triggers another Lambda function, which then filters and then finally sends to our incident management or communication services. Um, so out of the box, we support PagerDuty, Slack, and S3 as our outputs. But since this is just Python, you can extend it to support any type of API. This is what it looks like in PagerDuty. We get a lot of metadata around our alerts for, uh, for an analyst to, to use as context. And then if we look in Slack, we get the same type of alert. So I've gone through a lot of different services that make up StreamAlert. And as we add more and more of these services, you might be thinking that this is a really complex setup. But StreamAlert is designed with the goal of making deployment simple, no matter how complex the underlying infrastructure so today we live in a world where we can express infrastructure as code. This lets us break down all the necessary pieces into interchangeable parts. And in a lot of ways, this is like the evolution of manufacturing. So if we rewind a little to October 7th, 1913, on this day, assembly line production began on the Ford Model T, which cut back the time to produce a car from 12 and a half hours to 93 minutes. With this improvement, cars could be sold at a much cheaper price and then make it made them more accessible to a wider group of people and it also made them cheaper. But how did everything work before assembly line? Everything was created by hand. And the problem with this is that everything was unique, and repairs were really difficult due to a lack of interchangeable parts. This is synonymous to technology, because when we, whenever we build a type of infrastructure by hand or without automation, it becomes really challenging to manage and reproduce. And this is also a force multiplier as you need to make changes and scale, um, scale your team and scale the infrastructure. So for automation of deployment with Streamalert, we chose a tool called Terraform. And Terraform is an infrastructure management tool developed by HashiCorp, 
that allows us to write, plan, and create infrastructure as code. We built Streamler as a set of interchangeable parts by using Terraform modules. These modules can be mixed and matched to fit the needs of your organization. So if you have absolutely no AWS infrastructure, you can use all the modules that we created with Streamler, and then you can get up and running from absolutely nothing. If you are a current user of AWS and you have S3 buckets or you have Kinesis streams, you can also plug into those really easily. And because everything is expressed as code, this setup is always consistent. Um, so you have the option of burning and turning the entire infrastructure at will. Um, so you don't need to worry about learning how to write Terraform code either because we took care of that by abstracting it away with a command line tool called Streamlearn CLI, which wraps Terraform and then basically runs all of the uh, Terraform commands for you. And to get an idea of how fast this is end to end, we're gonna look at a quick little demo video. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm running our init function, which starts from nothing. Oh, sorry. This is what happens when you do live demos. <laughs> okay, so basically what's happening here is I'm starting from scratch and I type Streamlord CLI init and then I go. And what it's doing is it's first creating uh, this prerequisite infrastructure and um, this is like S3 buckets and these are encryption keys and things that we need to support Streamalert. Oh, I should make it full screen. Sorry about that. Yeah. So as you can see, this is creating a ton of things from one single command. It's, bro it's broken into four parts. So as I said, it does the prerequisite things first. And then what it does is it packages up our code. It puts it in S3 and then it sets up AWS Lambda to use this code. And then also, it's creating all the other infrastructure that we need to run Streamlore. It's creating our Kinesis streams, it's creating SNS. It's building all the glue that makes Streamlore work because there's a lot of other pieces that I didn't mention that, that make everything really work together. So I think what I'll do, let's see how far through we are. So end to end, to start from nothing, it takes two minutes and 36 seconds. So I'm just gonna speed this up so we can get to the end. So this is really great for people who are unfamiliar with Terraform. Um, and it basically allows us to do destruction and recreation of our infrastructure with just <coughs> one tool and one command line interface. Oh, the other thing that this is doing is the way that you set up Streamler is you have a JSON file that declares what your infrastructure is going, going to look like. And what this does is it generates Terraform files for you and then runs Terraform. And then at the end, what we're doing is we're deploying our function to our production function, which makes it immutable, and then we're done. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's go back. <laughs> I don't know what that was. So in closing, we built Streamlert to reduce the barrier for anyone to deploy security tools. Um, open source tools are great because they give you the flexibility of, um, or sorry, they give you the, uh, the ability to use code that everyone else can use. And um, the challenge that we often have is that deployment is left up to the user. So if you think Streamlert is gonna be great for you, I encourage you to head to our website, um, or our GitHub page rather, uh, github.com slash Airbnb slash Streamlert. Um, if you are, if you have questions about Streamlert, you can uh, contact us on Twitter, or you can contact, contact us on Slack. And if you're a author of a tool, I always encourage you to keep your deployment simple. Thank you.